continue to run at a clip of hundreds a month, with millions upon millions being lost to creditors. Losses on unsecured advances hit $89 million in June alone. Analysis by business pro Stubbs Gazette indicates that some company directors could be exacerbating these losses by sheltering their money for their own benefit. Here to explain the findings is Donal Bulger, finance director with business pro Stubbs Gazette. Welcome to the program, Donal. Uh, good morning. Uh, first, could you just quickly explain to us the general situation with insolvencies in Ireland? How bad is it? Are there signs of improvement? What's really going on out there? Okay, well, the the I mean, even when an economy is thriving, there will still be uh, insolvencies. Companies will fail for a variety of reasons, be it that the the trade has simply failed or they have overtraded or that they've uh, a particular claim or a particular event that's made the company uh, go into liquidation. So that uh, is is almost a... Uh, that'll happen every every month. Right, uh, so there's this norm, normal time. churn in the economy. Absolutely. And so yeah, but it's Ob- got a lot worse, of course. Obviously, in the last uh, couple of years, two to three years, there's been a significant increase in the number of insolvencies and and that is increasing at a pretty steady rate and there's and there's nothing to indicate that that rate will decrease in the foreseeable future indeed even when the economy uh, should turn at some point in the future uh, we can expect the the rate of insolvencies to, to stay steady for a period of time because of the lag factor right. that exists and, with insolvencies. and these insolvencies they burn up a ton of cash as well right yeah they're they're essentially hiding massive amounts of debt uh, from the Creditors uh, that, uh, in some cases, it's a it's what we'd call an honest uh, failure. In other cases, they're they're building up a, a pile of problems for the for the various creditors they have, ranging from revenue to banks to to uh, unsecured creditors. Just right. Like so, companies. so as these companies start failing, they 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 maybe you know they they lose sight of what the priorities are in terms of the order of creditors and maybe they're just throwing money at at the person who's shouting the loudest at that time yeah i think that the 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 problem probably is uh is, is twofold a lot of directors are arguably not qualified enough to be directors there are no qualifications required to be a director right. and so as a result you you have uh, you have individuals who are, who are in incredibly stressful situations who are simply are not equipped to deal with their their legal obligations uh, so yes there's, there's there's people who are simply uh, burying their head in the sand there's others who uh, possibly believe they can trade their way out of it and there's others who simply realize this the seriousness of the situation but they decide they're going to they're going to drag this out for a certain period of time to allow them to protect their own interests as best they can. Right. Let's talk about those guys. Um, your findings suggest that there are some directors are creating what I think you call phoenix entities. They're sort of diverting assets that otherwise should be uh, held onto for creditors or for paying the revenue and, and that sort of thing. And they're putting it elsewhere so that they can start up in business again. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. I mean, from the from the analysis that we have we have we have uh, completed on the companies in the month of June, uh, we have gone and tracked back in their. Uh, uh, their, their historical accounts and we've attended creditor meetings and we've uh, analysed the statement of affairs that are presented at the meetings and from that we have seen uh, cases where it's very clear that directors have actually disposed of assets to themselves while insolvent uh, leaving the creditors at, at, at a figure that they have agreed with themselves for those particular assets, uh, leaving the creditors uh, carrying the debt while they set up a new company, either as a limited liability company or indeed as a sole trader. Are they allowed to do that? Uh, they're certainly not, no. like There's, there's very strict uh, company law provisions that dictate what a director's, where their obligations stand. In the first instance, a director's obligations are to the shareholders. Once when they know the company is insolvent, their obligation automatically switches to the creditors of the company. So all actions they take should be in the best interest of the creditors, which that particular example clearly is not. Right. So so the directors are benefiting, the creditors are losing. The, the creditors would include the revenue, it would include the banks, it would include anybody they happen to be trading with and owe money to. Is that right? Uh, correct, yeah. So you have different types of creditors. You have your secured creditors, which would typically be uh, a, a bank whereby they have advanced funds uh, and secured it on an asset, typically a property or indeed the debtor book of a company if it's something like invoice discounting. So they get... They get to take that particular asset to try and recover uh, their particular debt. Then you have the preferential, which is essentially uh, the majority of revenue debt, uh, VAT and PAYE corporation tax, and also uh, certain uh, employee claims. Uh, and then you have the unsecured creditors. But the reality is when a company does go bust, um, 
typically there's there's nothing there for the unsecured creditors and there's invariably nothing there for the preferential creditors too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I can just sum that up, anybody who is sort of diverting this money in a way they shouldn't is is really stealing from the taxpayer, both via the nationalised banks, let's say, and through the revenue. Uh, correct. I, I think it's actually we've, it's and it's it's a bit more than that because there, there's a knock-on effect. Like uh, the the type of things we've seen very very briefly are where uh, there's intercompany loans. So they've att- essentially taken what is a good balance sheet and made it a bad balance sheet by lending it to a company that can't repay it, which is their own related uh-huh. company. Okay. Uh, they have paid down their own bank debt, which is personally guaranteed, thereby reducing their own exposure come post-liquidation. And we've seen cases whereby certain creditors who are included on the unsecured creditors list uh, going into liquidation themselves subsequently because that particular debt was too much for them to actually take. So there's a, there is a knock-on effect from liquidations and there's there's a very significant responsibility on directors to the creditors of the company, both revenue and actually other third-party creditors as well as the banks, obviously. And, and what can be done to stop this practice? I mean, is anyone else alert to it? Yeah, I think that there's there, there has actually been improvements. Like, uh, and in more recent years, liquidators have to submit a report to the the ODCE on the behaviour of the directors. So the liquidators are obliged to look at the performance of the directors uh, leading up to a liquidation. However, uh, uh, you know, sometimes liquidators are appointed by the liquidator or by the by the director, should I say? So th- th- there's a danger of the liquidator being what one could refer to as a as a, as a friendly liquidator. So I do think that uh, for starters, directors should have some, some level of qualification to equip themselves to be directors of a company to be able to avail of that corporate veil of limited liability. And secondly, uh, there, there should be, uh, which is partly what, what we're, we're doing here, uh, some method whereby the ODCE can get independent reports on what actually went on and then make their call as to what directors should be called to account. And so will you be telling the Director of Corporate Enforcement about your findings? We are. We're, we're, we're dealing with both the ODCE and the revenue uh, in relation to, to our findings here, and we continue to attend these and, and, and forward the reports. Very good. Thank you, Donald. Thanks for joining us. That was Donald Bulger, Finance Director of Business Pro Stubbs Gazette. Now, to tell us what's been happening on the markets overnight, we have Brenda Kelly of CMC Markets joining us on the line. Hello, Brenda. Good morning, John. Well, look, let us know what's going on. It seems a little bit calmer out there 